Welcome to the new month and welcome to Signpost. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for your mercies that endure forever. They are new every morning. And even as we enter into this month, we draw of your grace, we draw of your mercy, we draw of your help that will take us into all the purpose that you have for us this month. We pray that you will cause your word to prosper and steer our hearts into the things that you want to do in our lives and through us. Let your name be glorified, O God, our Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. For our time post this month, we are going to take, draw as our text, John chapter 1, verse 51. John chapter 1, verse 51. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus was speaking particularly to Nathanael, if you read from the verses preceding the one we have read. He was speaking to him. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. I want to title the message for our signpost this month, Securing an Open Heaven. Securing an Open Heaven. Now, when this Jesus declared in that scripture, and as we can also find in several other scriptures, about the heaven becoming open, it gives the understanding that the heavens can be open and the heavens can be shut. When we look around us, look into our lives, look into our land and nations and several other nations of the world, we will see experiences that point to the fact that the heavens are getting more and more sealed over lives and over nations and people day by day. The difficulties, the situations that instead of improving are getting worse by the day. The heavens are getting short and men and women are going through situations that they need the intervention of God to open the heavens. And so we'll be talking and emphasizing on securing an open heaven. What do we mean by open heaven? I will simply say that open heaven is the ability to be able to secure an access, access to God, access to the heavenlies. It is the ability to secure the presence of God, to be able to get to a position or a place where divinity intervenes and it intervenes with humanity. So we are talking about something that will produce a divine visitation, turning around the ordinary and the natural to do that which only God can do. 
So it is securing an access, securing God's presence. And usually when you have an open heaven, it produces God's favor. It produces the ability to receive the blessings of God. So all these, the blessings, the favor, are the products of an open heaven. And I pray that as you walk into this month, may you receive grace to operate and walk in an open heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, going back to our key text, we find Jesus speaking to Nathanael here. And he said, Verily I say unto you, Hereafter, ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So we find one of the things that happens when there is an open heaven. He said the angels of God will be ascending and descending. Here in this case, they will be ascending and descending on the Son of Man, referring to Jesus. So the angels will be ascending and descending. That means there will be a divine communication. Something will ascend from here to heaven, and something will descend from above upon lives. So there is a divine communication. There is an access where things are moved from here to heaven. And I pray that as we go on, we begin to see some of those things that when we experience and encounter an open heaven, we begin to see that things will be ascending. Your prayers will be ascending. Your services will be ascending. Even your works of grace and giving will be ascending. So we find here, I said, there will be a divine communication. We'll find on a similar example in Genesis chapter 28, if we read verses 11 and 12. Genesis 28, verses 11 and 12. He said, and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. This was the experience of Jacob. Jacob was worried. After the encounter, he received the, you know, the father's blessing. But it was in a crooked way. He took it subtly by cunning, and the consequences was facing him, glaring. So he was now running for his life. He journeyed until the sun set. Even though it was a physical sunset, it was like darkness was coming. And even in his life, so many things as it were was uncertain. He got to a position as if he was coming to the end of the road. He didn't know where he was even heading to. And he was so worried and he had to take his rest using a stone to rest his head. In that confusion, in that state, Heaven opened to him in a dream. He said he dreamed, and behold, 
a ladder was set up. I pray today that even as you walk into this month, may heaven set up a ladder for you. May there be a connection that will take you from the place of the ordinary, the place of your confusion, the place of not knowing what to do, the place of depression. May God connect you to something higher. He said a ladder was set up on the earth. Heaven set up a ladder and the top of it connected to heaven. It reached heaven. May you be connected to heaven. May the heavens open for you so that you can have the capacity to connect to heaven. And we see again there, he said, behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. If you look at this scripture, this is the Old Testament. We saw in John, the account of Jesus in the New Testament, we still find this a similar trend. His angels will ascend before they will descend. That means that something must go up before something must come down. So many of us, we are expecting something to come down from heaven. We are some expecting grace from heaven. We are expecting blessings from heaven. We are expecting favor, breakthrough from heaven. But the question is, what is ascending? Angels are ascending, but what are they carrying from you? What, is, what are you sending up that will provoke a descending? The process and the principle of God is that there has to be an ascension before there has to be a descending. I pray that you will connect to the capacity to cause something to flow truly from you that the heavens and the angels ministering spirits can carry up to God that will provoke a release even from heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we see that there clearly. And in that account, when you read further, you discover that this was what launched Jacob into a covenant with God that now later propelled all that he became. That he had to become the you know, he, God had to become the God of Jacob. That Israel had to come forth in the midst of the confusion he was in, in the midst of the, some of the issues that he even encountered later in life, was because of this encounter. He had an open heaven that launched him into a covenant. And God stands by that covenant. And I pray that whatever you... You are going through and wherever you are, that you will be able to secure an open heaven that will connect you to God's purpose for your life. That no matter what is around you, no matter what the you know, situations around is showing, there is something superior, something that cannot fail. And it is our covenant relationship and work with God. So that was the case of Jacob. So he obtained an open heaven. And so grace followed him that carried him all through life. So open heaven is possible. Men encountered it. Jesus told Nathanael in the New Testament that you will soon see. He said, I say unto thee, he said, you will see heaven open. He was talking to him. He said, hereafter, ye shall see heaven open. May we see heaven open. That is our prayer. That is my prayer for you, even this month. Now, but let's look at, like I mentioned, if the heavens will be open, it means the heavens too can be closed. The heavens can be closed. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, 
verse 23. Deuteronomy 28, verse 23. God was speaking to the children of Israel. He said, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. And the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Now, in fact, that verse of scripture, you know, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, it talks about the covenant of blessings that will follow obedience to God. And then later in that chapter, he now began to give the consequences when they fail to follow and live by the principles of the word of God. And one of them was that he said, the heavens that is over thy head shall be brass. That means your heaven will be sealed. Sealed with brass. Sealed with a metal. That means that you will not have rain. You will not have dew. Rain and dew, they signify the blessings of God. They signify refreshing from above. Rain is a sign of fruitfulness. When God wants to bless a people, he sends rain. And when the rain comes, you begin to see the the, the earth begins to produce its fruit. And so when the earth, the heavens becomes closed, covered with brass, it means the heavens are sealed. And when you read the verses, you know, that follow, you now see the consequences. The consequences. The place will become so dry that the dust, instead of freshness, dew and rain, it is dust that they will see. So that is a, when the heavens are closed. And the reason is when they don't hearken. If you fail to hearken to the word of the Lord. So we see that a closed heaven is a sign of judgment. Judgment over a people. Judgment over a nation. And that's why I said that if you look around us in our lives and looking around communities, looking around our nation and several other nations of the world, they may explain them out with economic principles. But what I see is that there is a, a closed heaven over nations, over people. That's why we have economic problems and so many things. They will explain it out with politics and so on. But the truth is that we need the mercy of God. We need the intervention of heaven so that we can be able to have a breakthrough. No man, no leader has the answer to the challenges that are ahead of us. That's why you see that daily is becoming more and more difficult. When it seems as if somebody comes promising solution, when it comes to the reality, we see things getting out of hand. And I pray that we will learn to look up to heaven. And I pray that we'll begin to desire that God will give us an open heaven. And I want you to know that you, even you as an individual, you need to seek your own heavens to be open. He said, thy heaven. Each one of us carry our own heaven. He said, thy heaven, just like we experience sometimes, rain can be falling somewhere here. And just a little distance from there, the rain is not falling. It means that if it continues that way, if it goes beyond the geographical, you know, what they call conventional rain, 
you begin to see that that place where it is raining, the ground there will be fruitful. Why the other place where it's not raining, the ground will be unfruitful. So every one of us in the realm of the spirit, we also have our own heavens. And that's why we must desire and say, God, I want to break forth to secure an open heaven so that God will send rain upon my life. So I'm going to be looking in this second part of this message what are one or two things we need to do to secure an open heaven. We'll find the principles laid out. We'll start from where we started in John chapter 1. If we read verse 50 and then 51. John chapter 1 verses 50 and 51. You find, and Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. Believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than this. Hallelujah. Then he now went further in verse 51 and said, and I, he said unto him, verily I say unto you, hereafter ye shall see heaven open. So we find that this communication was with Nathaniel. And we find from that 50 that when Jesus had an encounter with Nathanael, when he was invited by Philip, Nathanael believed, even though at a point he was living in unbelief. Initially, he had said, is anything good that can come out of Nazareth? But when he encountered Jesus, all his views changed. And he believed. So what are we trying to say? The foundation to open heaven is our faith in God. Our belief. This belief is our surrendering our life to Jesus. Coming into a relationship with him. So for you to experience an open heaven, it is that you must be a believer indeed. It's not just enough to go to church. You know, God knows those who believe. He told Nathanael, so because I said this to you, believest thou, he said you will see greater things than this. Your faith in God launches you to greater things. It is the launching part that launches you to greater things. Even when things may look weary and unexplainable, he said, you will see greater things. And part of those greater things was that you will see the heavens were open. And the angels are ascending and descending. So the foundation is that he has, he, we have to believe. Then second factor is the life of obedience. Like we said in Deuteronomy. It was the life of obedience and consecration to God. Hearkening to the word of God. Because sin, like I said, closes the heaven. So the life of obedience, the third factor that can open the heavens, and I'm going to dwell there a little bit more, is sacrifice. Because I mentioned that when the heavens open, there has to be a communication. There has to be a communication. And in that communication, there has to be an ascending, and there has to be what? A descending. So I want to dwell a little on that communication. So sacrifice is one of the things that can launch you into open heaven. So that when your heaven opens, you begin to see that you're sacrificing prayer, living a life of prayer. The angels have 
things to carry to heaven that will now bring down a blessing. Your life of service, your life of giving. I want to use a few examples in scripture to buttress this. How men secured their own open heaven. Let me start with Colinius in Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. Acts chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. We find here the story of Colinius. He said, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Colinius, a centurion of the man called the Italian man, a devout man, a one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the night hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying to him, Colinius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayer and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. Thy prayer, thy arms have come up for a memorial before God. I want you to note, come up. That is the story of Colinius. In fact, as at this point, Colinius had not been totally surrendered his life to Christ. He, did, he was not having a, a salvation experience. He was a religious man. He was devoted. That devout man devoted, fear God. But he was ignorant of the way of salvation. And God saw his ignorance. Sometimes we can be sincerely ignorant. Many are in the church but they are sincerely ignorant. And I pray that God will show mercy to you and open your eyes. So God saw, and he needed to help this man to be able to show him how he can get connected to salvation. But look at what the scripture said. He said, an angel visited him. He had a divine visitation. I told you that one of the products of open heaven is divine visitation. He visited him. And when he looked up and saw the angel, he said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, your prayers and your arms, that is your gifts, your life of giving sacrifices, has come up to me as a memorial before God. So something was ascending. One of them was prayers. Another one was his giving. This month we're emphasizing on giving. Giving to God. Giving to the needs around you. Giving to touch lives. He does life. Those attitude of giving, his prayers, they were ascending up to God. And the result of it was an angel visiting him. God sending an angel. Remember we said, when the heavens open, angels ascend and what? Descend. And what did he bring for Colinius, the greatest gift ever. It was the how to show him the way of salvation. When you read the verses later, you find how God had to give a kind of GPS of how to locate Peter. Those days, it's not like today that you can have street addresses and numbers and GPS, but 
heaven had a way to locate him to where Peter is, who will lead him to Christ. And when you read on, you find all that happened. So that was Colinius. So we find their prayers, we find their giving, they were sending up. We find there also a life. Then we look at another example. This time, let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 1. We are going to look at verses 6 to 8. Just verses 6 to 8. Verses 6 to 8. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the law, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. In that night, God appeared unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto the Lord, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and has made me to reign in his stead. You can read the rest of his prayer there. But my interest there, first in verse 6, the Bible told us, he said, Solomon made an offering, a sacrifice of a thousand bond offering. So that means that whichever animals he was using, he used a thousand to make sacrifice to God. I want you to just imagine in a while when you gather, whether it be sheep or goat or cattle, a thousand of it. And look at the time it took to sacrifice. It looks at the volume of sacrifice. The God that Solomon made to God. It was a sacrifice. It was a giving. A thousand. And the Bible says, burnt offering. When you talk about burnt offering, it is that offering that is wholly, completely dedicated to God. Completely given up to God. It's not like some other offering that you just take a little part and burn, and then the priest will eat the rest. This was completely, it signified a complete dedication, just like Romans 12, 1 will say, I beseech you therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and what? acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we find here sacrifice, giving, which was a sacrifice. The emphasis I want to make here is that one of the things God is expecting to ascend is our life of sacrifice. Giving that is a sacrifice. That one that will cost you something, like David will say, I will not offer unto God that which cost me what? Nothing. It is what is expected to ascend to God. And when it does, you begin to see the reply from verse 7 that in of, of that second Chronicles chapter 1. God appeared unto him. He said, the same night, something ascended. Then something began to descend. He said, the same night, God appeared unto Solomon and said, ask what I shall give you. Open check. Open check. I will see the things that he asked. And God even answered beyond what he asked. If you read further up to verse 12. God answered beyond what he asked. God did more. He said, ah, you didn't ask me for riches. You didn't ask me for long life. You asked for wisdom and understanding. I'm going to give you that. 
And in addition, I'm going to give you riches. In addition, I'm going to give you, you know, a long life. So we find there that something, there was a sacrifice. The same tone we find in the life of Abraham, when you read Genesis chapter 22, Genesis, in Genesis chapter 22, God had to try Abraham. He was demanding a sacrifice. He said, offer to me your son, Isaac, your only son, the one you love. So the measure, God was looking at his devotion as a bond offering. If you also look at that place, bond offering, total dedication, total devotion. God looks at the cost. He measures the cost. He said, offer him to me. And it was a difficult sacrifice to make. But thank God, Abraham trusted God. And when he went to do that sacrifice, sacrificing the, the promise of God, the Bible told us, when you now get to verse 12, God told him, he said, now I know that thou fearest me. God visited him again. He said, now I know that you, vis you, you, you fear me. Every offering, every giving that is sacrificial conveys a message to God. Your giving is conveying a message. The sacrifices you make to God, the offerings you give is carrying a message. Show you whether you fear him or not. He said, now I know. Show you whether you love him. It doesn't matter how much we sing about how we love him. It doesn't matter how much we proclaim how we love him. The showing of it, part of it, is how we are ready to make sacrifices to him. And we discover that whatever you give to God does not really die. Anything you give to God does not really die. Sometimes we think that when we give, it is finished. We think that when we give, oh, I don't have anything again. It is the way to keep things alive is to give it to God. And we saw that Isaac did not need to die. Isaac did not die. Rather, there was a ram kept there to take over. So we find the covenant of multiplication now followed. He said, now, he said, in, from verses 15 to 18 of that Genesis 22, you find the covenant of multiplication that now led, you know, in series from Isaac to Jacob, and now we had a nation. He said, the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven a second time and said, by myself I have sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply the seed as the stars of heaven. You read on. He went as, and he said, as the sun which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. All these were hinged on promise of, you know, on, on the covenant of sacrifice. Because something ascended Blessings overflowing began to descend. He began to have a covenant relationship that will be there for several years to come. He's still speaking unto today. We can give on and on. See an example of the widow of Zarephath who had the last meal and God had to ask for it. 
And do you know that immediately she surrendered and gave it up? The meal began to multiply. I told you, whatever you give does not die. Whatever you give does not finish. It began to multiply. And the secret of how God multiplied it was that every day there was a replacement. Every day there was a replacement. So God is able to release and meet our need even in these days when things are looking difficult. And that's why our eyes must be off from all the hardship we are seeing around to God who is able to supply. We must know that there is a principle we need to live. And in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, God gave a challenge, which was also related to giving. He gave a challenge. He said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now. Prove me now. If I will not open the windows of heaven, pour you a blessing, that there will be no room enough to receive it. He even went forward and said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He said, prove me. I pray that as we... Moving to this month, when it seems that things are tightening up more and more, it is the moment to seize the opportunity to secure your open heaven. It's the moment to prove God. It's the moment to make sure that your spiritual communication is alive. Let your heavens be open, open with prayers. Open with dedication, open with service, open with giving, sacrificial giving. Let us pray. I want you to talk to God. I don't know the area that the Spirit of God is ministering to you. But I pray that every one of us will receive the capacity to secure our own open heaven. That despite what is happening, our own heavens will be open. I want to pray for you today. Even as you stir your heart to say, God, nothing will close my heavens. I will not even live a life of sin that will close my heavens. Because I told you that sin shuts the heavens. And that's why I want to pray with you. And first of all, you are here listening to me. And you know that your heavens have been shut because of your lifestyle. Some of us, you have not even had a relationship with Jesus. You are not born again. You are just religious. Cornelius was religious, but he wasn't born again. Jesus needed to make sure he had an experience of being born again. And that's why I want to plead with you as I pray for you now, that if you are not sure of your salvation, you can yield to him now, because that is the foundation to any open heaven. You can just pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you that you pay the price for my sins so that the heavens can be open to me. Today, I come to you in all sincerity Asking for your mercy. Forgive me my sins. And receive me unto yourself. Thank you for saving me. Amen. And I want to thank you for as many 
that today they have taken a decision to surrender their lives to you. May your word be fulfilled, O oh God our Father, that if anyone come unto you, you will in no wise cast out. I pray today that the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross for man's redemption will apply to their hearts and cleanse them, purge their conscience from sin and dead works. And let them be liberated today into a relationship with you. Wherein the access to heaven will now be open to them. Thank you as you save them and bring up upon them even your spirit, even the spirit of sonship. Let your name be glorified, O God, our Father. Thank you, Father. We pray for everyone who has been part of this meeting. Our desire, O God, our Father, is that you will grant us an open heaven. Lord, as many that their heavens over them have been shot. Some of them, because of their carelessness, even though they are born again, I pray for mercy today. Let the mercy of God be released on as many as realize their place of failing and returning to you. Let the power of God cause a new spirit to come over their lives and let the heavens open again. Let the mercies of God be released again that all the dryness will be taken away. Above all, O oh God, our Father, we pray that by the help of your Spirit, our heavens will remain open. Let grace to release angels on assignment over our lives cause that, O oh God, the necessary things, our prayers, our services, our dedication in giving, Lord will ascend to heaven. Let there be, O oh God, things, devotion, resources that will ascend on our behalf. Because I know that when there is an ascending, there will be a descending. And so we proclaim this month that God, the open heaven, will send the reign of God, the reign of grace, the reign of favor, the reign of blessings, the reign of open doors, the reign of miracles, Beyond explanation, may the heavens release it upon our lives. That as we go through this month, testimonies shall follow us. Testimonies shall follow you by the power of his spirit. Thank you, Lord, because you will give your people victory on every side. Thank you because you will meet them at the point of their needs. Be thou exalted, O God our Father, and bless every moment of this month. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Once again, welcome to the new month and have a victorious month.